I mean, on the subject of on the subject of cynicism, um, we ha in Georgia um, the battles over their foreign agent legislation continue apace, and the U.S., which has a very strict foreign agent law, um, uh, is leading the charge um, against uh, the, Georgia's efforts to re regain some semblance of sovereignty. What what, what page do you want to? Um, don't go to Georgia color revolutions. Um, are we actually live now? Yeah, I believe so. I don't. It says we're not, it says we're not live. Yeah. Hold on a moment, folks. If you're still with us, if you really exist, <clears throat> I believe that we are still live. Yeah, we're live. Okay. Okay. Jolly good. Um, but yeah, if you just go to the section marked um, Georgia Color Revolution. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with uh, Democracy Rising or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a whole section on the Rose Revolution in, in 2003. Um, the, the, uh, the report you're about to see on screen was produced by USAID in 2005, and it's called Democracy Rising, and it talks about how um, well, many people watched in wonder as the multicolored revolutions took place. The Orange Revolution in Ukraine, the Rose in Georgia, the Cedar in Lebanon, the Tulip in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, few realized that for years, the US and other countries and organizations had been supporting this homegrown desire for democracy. Um, so what this is, it, it, this is effectively a, uh, again, a, 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 I did it my way, except this is kind of at the peak of, of US empire in, in 2005. Uh, it's showing off about how they overthrew governments, uh, how USAID and NED overthrew governments in the former Soviet sphere, um, uh, using tactics that they honed against Slobodan Milosevic in 2000 in Serbia, um, in, what, in what's known as the Bulldozer Revolution, by sponsoring pro-democracy groups, um, uh, uh, activist causes. Um, uh, uh, they sought to undermine and destabilize and ultimately overthrow um, uh, existing regimes to replace them with neoliberal um, quote unquote democracies right. where, where, where the um, the US and its 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 Western allies could pro pro profiteer and um, <laughs> exploit uh, exploit workers um, as wage slaves um, for subsistence pay. Um, and isn't it funny how every time a, de a democracy a new democracy forms it 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 transforms into an oligarchy and. Yeah, you know, matter I mean, it's of remarkable, isn't it? I mean, there is a there is a USA report which is um, uh, it from I think I think it's from the year two thousand, which explicitly states that um, the US would not meet our definition of a functional democracy. So yeah. this is the a US government agency that exports democracy abroad, admitting that the US is not yeah. a um, it w uh, w would be con considered a dictatorship under its own under its own uh, definitions. But yeah, so I mean, this 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 report it's worth it, it's quite short and it's worth looking. Yeah, just I mean the, the hubris and um, delusion on show is quite quite ah. remarkable. But there's a whole section on on Georgia which provides a kind of uh, a useful uh, background to. Um, well, can, can, can I? I just want to talk about USAID real quick. Yeah. USAID being led today by Samantha Power, who I have personally exposed, um, <laughs> meeting with. Uh, Speaking at a convention uh, sponsored in part by the Church of Scientology, um, alongside other U.S. government officials, uh, she's also I've as as I've reported for the Gray Zone, um, spoken at a rally organized by longtime fundraisers for the Azov Battalion for Right Sector, um, other neo-Nazi groups, and she her motorcade uh, actually killed a child and refused to stop one. So I call her Samantha can't stop, won't stop power. Um, so, you know, when she comes, it's it's generally uh, chaos ensuing. But USAID, uh, the U United States Agency for International Development, actually one of uh, their first things that they did was training, um, training Latin American police departments in Uruguay, I believe, yeah. uh, how it was all uh, over the region, in fact, right? Um, they they taught them to kidnap homeless people off the street and torture them. Yes, as guinea pigs um, for for uh, future interrogations, political interrogations. This is, of course, the uh, the agency um, 
primarily behind democracy promotion and, yeah. and well the national endowment for democracy too which is yeah <clears throat> in the words of its founders and longtime chiefs does publicly or does overtly what the cia used to do covertly right. so yes funnel money to opposition groups in in foreign countries in order to destabilize and unseat governments um there, but yeah there is a whole section in this um in the in, in this democracy rising report yeah. that are on on georgia and what happened there so what's the title of that it's, of that section, do you know? It's just called Rose Revolution, I think. Okay. But, um, uh, th- yeah, so um, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Georgia, Georgia was, of course, part um, of that. Uh, it was led by an individual called Edward Shevardnadze, who was a he was a longtime Communist Party apparatchik, but he was a right-hand man of Gorbachev and heavily involved in the... Um, dissolution of the Soviet Union. He was, he was, I think he was the defense minister in the last Soviet government and he withdrew Red Army uh, forces from Europe. He, he drew up all sorts of uh, arms control treaties um, yeah. with the US. And so he entered office in uh, uh, Georgia very much as Washington's guy. And yeah. Georgia started receiving an enormous amount of a of USA. I think it was only Israel was a bigger recipient than um, than Is that Georgia right? for many for many years. Uh, George Soros also took an interest in um, in Georgia, um, and um, it, because Shevardnadze thought that he was unassailable, and hey, you know these guys are my friends. He allowed an enormous amount of foreign penetration, both um, uh, commercially, but also in terms of NGOs. Like he signed, I think that Georgia has. It, it, multiple NGOs per um, uh, or sorry it's like it's like a hundred Georgian citizens or some or 150 <laughs> to every NGO so yeah. I mean, very 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 well served yeah. by all of these foreign NGOs and so Incre- including uh, Christina Pusha who was uh, who was um, the spokesperson for um, what's his name uh, the, the Trump opponent why is his name escaping me uh, the, the, the governor of Florida Ron DeSantis. Yeah, yeah. Her, her, her his spokeswoman uh, was uh, a foreign agent for Georgia, and really involved wow. in the NGO scene. But, but yes. Yeah, so there is. It has an absolutely enormous and extremely bloated NGO sector, which, which, which to this day um, has an enormous impact on policy and uh, on, on and, and government action. Um, these NGO, these NGOs that that Shevard Nadze allowed were his undoing. And there is a whole section in this report about how um, in 1999, US funding helped Georgians draw up and build support for a freedom of information law, which the government adopted. This law allowed the media and NGOs to expose government misdeeds, force the firing of corrupt ministers, and give people a sense that they should regulate the government. Yeah. Um, uh, and so it, they, they also uh, they also uh, cultivated a large number of assets on the ground, including Mikhail Saakashvili, um, yeah. who was, I think he was the justice minister um, under Shevard Nadze, and he quit uh, and then started... Um, uh, his own sort of making his own political ambitions very very clear um well we can talk about him we can pause and talk about him really quick because he just really right. quickly sure. and so in this uh, in this democracy rising report there is uh, a an, an individual tied to the u.s funded liberty institute states the success in georgia uh, is the result of people's commitment to democracy but without foreign assistance i'm not sure we would have been able to achieve what we did without bloodshed um, and there is another quote uh, further on, which is um, from uh, from the start, USAID uh, uh, supported civil society and created a network of civic minded people who supported democracy and were ready to join the Rose Revolution in 2003. Um, another another a former Georgia a mayor in Georgia, it doesn't state where, says with U.S. assistance, new leaders were born. The U.S. helped good people get rid of a bad and corrupted government. Yeah. And that led to the uh, rise of Saakashvili, yes. uh, who um, was – he's a, uh, a, a big um, investor in, in Ukraine and the post-Maidan government there. He was made the mayor of Odessa, Odessa yeah, yeah um, despite being the former prime minister of Georgia and yeah. not a Ukrainian national. I think that he was given like was given citizenship. citizenship. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, I think as well, it's important to note that Saakashvili was, well, I, 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 I remember 
watching at university, like all of the, the all of the the, the, uh, the media coverage around the war in Georgia in two thousand and eight, uh, which began when Saakashvili, with the US encouragement, began striking um, civilian areas. In this is two thousand eight. A video I'm playing right now. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. The, the, like the, he started shelling civilian areas in. Um, uh, th- th- there, are, there are some breakaway regions of, uh, within Georgia that uh, th- they want, they claim independence, um, and but uh, Georgia wants them to be their own territory, and, and under an international agreement with Russia, Russia, Russia are guarantors of their semi-independent, kind of the grey area of like, I mean, uh, anyway, the, the point is, is yes, so that that, that that war started. Um, um, Georgia started, sorry, the Georgian government started it and they did so with US um, uh, encouragement. Um, they were crushed within days um, by Russia. But um, it, it, Saakashvili was, at the time, um, presented as this uh, crusading, courageous Democrat standing up to Russian barbarism. Does this remind you of, of mm. anything, Alex? Um, and uh, and uh, in, reality, in reality, Georgia, under his rule, in many areas became even more um, autocratic. It became far more repressive. Prisons became uh, the, the politicized hotbeds of torture and rape. Mm. Um, he helped cover up a hideous murder orchestrated by one of his government ministers. And um, it, 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 yes, it, 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 he was no cuddly Democrat at all. Mm. He was voted out in 2012 fair and square, despite massive NED efforts to support him. And he was replaced by Georgia Dream, who've, re- who've ruled ever since. Now, now, Georgia Dream are almost universally described in the Western media as pro-Russian or like Russian puppets. Sure. Actually, they have a very difficult balancing act, which is on the one hand, they don't want to piss off Russia, which is their biggest trading partner. And uh, they're, they're far more powerful and much larger neighbor mm. uh, because that it was disastrous for them before. So why would they want to do that? But they are pursuing EU membership. They've attempted, to, well, they haven't sanctioned Russia themselves. They have attempted to comply with Western sanctions regimes. And I think it's important to, yeah, so they, they are pursuing legislation, which is, I think it's called the Foreign Agents Act, or yeah. the Foreign Interference Act. But the, but the the purpose is to compel NGOs. Foreign the, Influence it, Transparency Law. Yeah, the Foreign in, in, Influence Transparency Law. The, the purpose is to compel any organization that receives foreign funding, even if it's from Russia, to compel, sorry, to publish um, where their funding comes from and how much it is. Um, at the start of 2023, when the government was was initially pushing for this, uh, there were mass demonstrations, um, uh, condemnations from uh, from US spokespeople uh, stating that this is not in line with our um, our vision for a future Georgia, i.e. don't do it or else. Yeah. Um, and then when protesters were on the verge of storming um, the uh, Georgia's parliament, just like in two, the 2003 Rose Revolution, the government backed down. Um, since then, they have claimed that they are. Uh, they claim to have uh, vanquished a, a series of color revolution attempts. There was a, um, uh, I think it was the end of last year that <clears throat> they announced that that there was a a plot by people around Saakashvili, including the head of the Georgian Legion, your, mm. your dear Mamu friend. Mamu Gamalashvili, yeah. yeah, whose sister is in parliament there. Yeah, um, and they they, uh, they alleged, uh, Canvas, it was this, um, this shadowy regime change outfit, which is based in Serbia um, and grew out of Otpor, which was mm. an NED-funded group in Yugoslavia that was central to Milosevic's overthrow. Um, they, Its founders then started this company called Canvas, and they started training people yeah. overseas. To Including, I believe, people. Wang Guaido. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And there, there are some leaked documents um, project released by WikiLeaks. Uh, it's, it's Stratfor, which is this yeah. shadowy private spying agency mm-hmm. staffed by ex-CIA people, or are they truly X right. and it's de- and um, there, there are internal discussions where Stratfor employees refer to Canvas as, uh, as US government funded and taking down governments the US doesn't like and when used correctly they are more powerful than an aircraft carrier uh, so quite why their activities haven't been just banned everywhere I do not know but they were allegedly involved um, in this effort last year to overthrow the Georgian government, so I think that the the, the, this import, the, the geopolitical context here is 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 important to note as well. Is that Georgian leaders have announced, or they've at least claimed, that they've been pressured aggressively behind.
behind closed doors to uh, open a new front in the war in Ukraine, to mm-hmm. arm Ukraine, and they have refused, which has not gone down well. So they are rather um, uh, they're rather in the bad books of Zelensky and uh, and Biden uh, right. at the moment. So it's actually in it, 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 in terms of pushing for this legislation again, it's actually pretty brave. Um, right. and there are have been absolutely massive. Um, uh, uh, protests in the centre of Georgia over this, yeah. um, which show no sign of of, uh, of letting up. Um, it, it's, what's quite remarkable is there's a very good article in Left East by um, that's up now. Yeah, uh, by uh, two um, individuals who really know their stuff um, on Georgia and the caucus, um, uh, and they have a very a very balanced, informed view. Again, I would urge viewers to read it. It's not it's not a, a long and overly detailed article. It's straight into the point. But um, yeah, the, 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 the at the core of protesters' concerns is that this law will interfere with uh, Georgia's EU aspirations. Right. Now, it, it is important to note that um, once the Georgian government dropped this legislation initially last year, the EU acknowledged rather quietly and, in, and, and embarrassedly, um, well, we're thinking of almost identical legislation for all EU member states. So <laughs> yeah. it would block your EU aspirations, but once joining, you would have to adopt exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, but, and, and I mean, they're, they're obviously like dangling the, 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 the tree in front of uh, Georgia as, as far as EU membership because yes. I mean you can't you can't have them be a member of the EU and also have it as like a testing ground for you know um, different styles of foreign interference yes. you know <laughs> um, yeah and we, we have I'm going to bring up the tweet from uh, the, the prime, prime minister. minister yeah the, the, this is this is fighting words so this is the prime minister of Georgia who um, published a statement on Twitter. Feel free to read it, Alex. But he, he effectively go, goes in to detail about why they're doing this and how um, he thinks it's extremely hypocritical of the US to be condemning crackdowns on these protesters in Georgia while also sending armoured uh, thugs to destroy um, tent encampments on, on US university campuses. Uh, so... Um, Shoot from the top. Well, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go. I'll go quickly because it's it's a bit long. But spoke to uh, Department of State counselor and expressed my sincere disappointment with the two revolution attempts of 2020 to 2023, supported by the former U.S. ambassador and those carried out through NGOs financed from external sources. Uh, had these attempts been successful, the second front line would have been opened in Georgia. Um, besides, I explained to Mr. Cholet that. False statements made by officials of the U.S. State Department about the transparency bill and the street rallies remind us of similar false statements made by former U.S. ambassadors in 2020 to 2023, which served to serve to the facilitation of violence from foreign funded actors and to the support of revolutionary processes back then. Also, I clarified to Mr. Chalet that it requires a special effort to restart the relations against this background, which is impossible without a fair and honest approach. I have not expressed my concern with Mr. Chalet about a brutal crackdown of student protest rally in New York City. <laughs> Sassy. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I think that... And do you want to bring up your Mint Press article? Yeah, sure. I mean, not much to add really on what we Whoever said. did this cover art did a fantastic job, job. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think that it's, it's important to note as well that it, what's interesting is and this is a point made in the left east article is that the ngo at the at the forefront of the unrest in 2023 were a large number of ngos that were all in receipt of u.s funding so for instance there's a group called the shame movement yeah which was established to scrutinize laws passed by georgian dream um, and shame them. Right. And so they were at the forefront of this initially, shaming them over the foreign agent legislation. Yeah. Um, those, uh, so they're doing their NED, for, they, they receive enormous amounts of, any, of money from NED. Uh, so they were just doing their job as the shadow CIA um, right. <laughs> instructed and directed them. This time round, there is a lot less obvious uh, NGO presence. And I think that there is a large number of Georgians because they have been misled into thinking that this is a a crackdown on civil society uh, that uh, and indeed does threaten their EU membership who are genuinely uh, are 
committed and have you know, honest intentions, even if misguided. Um, at the same time, a large number of these people will, at some stage, because of the profusion of NGOs in Georgia, have been involved with them directly or indirectly. And there's also the fact that you know very well that if you are receiving money from the USAID or NED, there are things that you probably should do, have to do, can't yeah. talk about, etc. Right. Um, there are declassified CIA files from the 1940s that show that the CIA knew back then that, that providing funding to, for example, um, anti-communist activists in West Germany had a kind of ripple effect or aftershock effect where people who are no longer in direct receipt of funding will continue to engage in these activities because it's what they're meant to do. Um, and we see that today. Um, yes, that this is my article for, for Mint Press. It goes into some, some detail um, on, um, on the Rose Revolution and, and the, the events that led up to it, um, both within and without Georgia. Um, but yeah, I think that Georgia is it, but stuck between a rock and a hard place, really. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, and it's quite remarkable to see them uh, standing up for themselves like this in the face of intensive U.S. pressure to drop it. Right. And I think you've got to bear in mind that there are a number of other countries which ha are mulling um, uh, similar legislation and have likewise been threatened. Not far from where we are now, Republika Srpska, one yeah. of the components of, right. of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the government there is pushing for a foreign agent law and they've basically been threatened if that they do this there will be consequences um well, well it's, i mean it's natural i think for i mean and you, you see china's uh, done stuff of this nature too yes. but i think it's natural because you have uh these ngos which are getting funding from foreign governments that are playing games with very integral policies right mm. um policies which define a country um so if you want to have any kind of claim to sovereignty then you can't just let these actors these foreign actors like r run rampant and 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 masquerade as uh as legitimate grassroots voices when they're getting you know millions of dollars from uh, outfits like the the National Endowment for Democracy. It's I mean, it's I'm, just basic statecraft. Yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, and that's the thing is that the, the Britain um, has passed legis wide ranging legislation. I think we talked about this last week uh, called the National Security Act, which sure. is, goes way further than this. Yeah, right? and it's, right. it's, it's written so vaguely that like someone retweeting the Russian Foreign Ministry could end up in trouble like, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, that, yeah, it's, yeah. That, it's that sweeping this is literally just compelling organizations that receive foreign funding to disclose it and i might add as well that like the sickness of the ngo industrial complex um i'm coining that term if it doesn't exist already is, is, is exemplified by the reaction to um to this last time round where the george soros open society foundation i think i'm gonna have to find the exact um uh, the exact phrasing because it was just so it was just so utterly shocking. Um, the, the, yeah, the, the, they issued a statement uh, effectively um, st warning that if you pass this um, if you pass this legislation, it will result in um, uh, yeah. Here we go. Um, that this bill will leave defenseless, abused children, and women, people with disabilities, minorities, scientists, workers, and the youth. It will result in assistance not being provided to socially vulnerable families, um, uh, and so on and so forth. And it's like, so what you're saying is these organisations would rather abandon abused children and women than just admit that they receive foreign funding. Yeah, right. Uh, and it's just, I mean, it's and it's, that's shocking. so clearly a red herring too, because like if if, if it were the case that the, the the United States was funding women's shelters in Georgia. You know, I don't think that many Georgians would necessarily have a problem with that, right? Yes, it's not it's yeah. not women's shelters that are the issue here. Yes, yeah. it's it's the policy uh, groups, the the, the activists, uh, the the the, the uh, street warriors, and 
and the um, the little offices that they hang out in after the protest. Yes, you indeed, know. indeed. Well, I mean, we, we we had a bit of that in Belgrade earlier this year, uh, where the there was a large number of Western funded NGOs and groups who were claiming widespread electoral fraud right. um, in Serbia's general election. And but what one of the 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 kind of ironic boomerangs of the fact that that the color revolutions were effectively birthed here is that the public are extremely wary. <laughs> so yeah. like, there was this organization. Uh, called CRTA that publishes very detailed reports on election or alleged election rigging in Serbia. And if you look at its funders, it's like the NED USAID, yeah. the US embassy in Serbia, the yeah. British embassy in Serbia, the British foreign office. And it just goes yeah. on and on and on. And like any Serb looking at that is like, right, well, this is an attack on my country and I'm yeah. not going to listen to them. Right. So, and I think that, that, that that's, inc- that's increasingly the attitude everywhere. Yeah. Now. And, and, and I mean, like, that's the thing. This bill in Georgia is not saying that you cannot receive foreign funding if no. you're an NGO. They're saying if you receive foreign funding, you have to disclose it. So, there is no reason why it should be shutting down any NGOs, right? No, not at all. Not at all. 